Hi, my name is Rudd Simmons. I'm the producer and director of the first season. We're here at the AMC Theaters Kansas City Film Fest 2012. Background into like the directing. Uh, you mean how long did I had I wanted to make the first season? Mm -hmm. Well, I had, the first season actually kind of came to me. It, it was it was very interesting. I, I when I went to film school, I wanted to be a director. People, I was in college, and people said, you know, "What do you want to do when you get out?" And I said, "I want to be a movie director. I want to direct features." And they said, uh, "Cool. What does a director do?" And I didn't know. I mean, I grew up in a working class family back in Virginia, and I had only been to drive-ins, and I got to, to the school, and I discovered the, the movies, and it was just kind of remarkable. Then came up to New York, went through graduate school at NYU, their, their filmmaking program. And what I found is that um, as I started working, I was a lot more comfortable, and I felt I had a lot more to add in working not with the actors, but actually with the production mm -hmm. and working with the directors themselves and being able to understand their vision and then being able to support it. So I think that there was a long time when I had stopped thinking about directing film at all. Uh, and I had been thinking, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. And Paul and Phyllis, the subjects of the documentary, we had, my wife and I had gone. And we had them over one night for dinner, and they, they told us that they were going to leave their jobs and sell their home and buy a farm. And uh, you know, we thought that was insane. But um, the next morning, I woke up and my wife said, you know, you ought to do this. This would be a great movie. And so uh, I called them up, and uh, they said, uh, yeah, sure, let's do it. So I, I guess the short answer to your question is how long had I wanted to make the first season? <laughs> Probably about eight days before we actually started <laughs> shooting. But I'll tell you something. I mean, the, the real answer to your question, I think, is what it's taught me is that opportunity is, you know, I hate to be cliche, but it really is in your backyard. I'm a big believer that you, you go through your life and, and, and you look at the world around you and take advantage of things that present themselves whether or not it's working with people in your community or making movies with the guys you went to film school with or that you went to school with or making a documentary film about your alma mater, your high school, if there's some interesting issue that's going on there. So they were kind of like friend, friends of friends or how you met? How you well, met. I mean, Paul was a uh, construction contractor. He had a, a construction business. And we have a house in upstate, and, and he had done a lot of renovation work for us. And that's the way we met. Um, but he's a really cool guy. And what would happen is Paul would show up at the site, and I would be there, and we'd talk about what he was going to do that day. And I would say, yeah, can I get you a cup of coffee? And he said, yeah, that'd be great. I'll, I'll have a coffee before the gang gets here. And so I get the coffee and we start talking and then the crew would show up and he'd tell them what to do and we kept talking. And before you knew it, we were having beers on the porch and the sun was going down and we'd been talking all day long. So we, we became friends pretty quickly. I mean, that's what we did better. I, I lived with them and uh, shot for a week on and then a week off over an eight month period. And it started actually the day that they moved into the farm. Um, and then I went off and, let's see, what movie did I do at the time? I think I went off and did The Road, and then came back and uh, did follow-up visits, and I started doing interviews at that point. Uh, and then went away and did another movie, and that was, may have been Boardwalk Empire, uh, and came back, and um, uh, at a point, it was uh, last year, a uh, year before last, it was 2009, it was in the fall, and I, I just felt like I can't shoot this anymore. I feel like I've done everything I can. And if I don't edit it and finish it now, then I'm just going to lose the momentum. And so I took a year off and, um, and, and, and finished the, the film. The style of the movie ends is called Cinema Verite, which is a, a kind of a fly on the wall approach. And the 
the, the, one of the things that I really wanted to do in the movie is to have it as intimate as possible. So when an audience is sitting there watching, they feel as if they're actually sitting there at the table with Paul and Phyllis, that they're going through this event with them. And in order to do that, in order to do that, you really do need to have as small a crew as you can. Now, traditional cinema verite has two people, this camera and sound, then there's an assistant camera on the truck, and maybe a PA. But you don't need all of that now with the video equipment. And I've designed a sound system, so I had a mic on Paul, a mic on Phyllis all the time. I had a mic on the camera, and I had a mixing panel that I wore, and I had a camera on my shoulder, and that was it. We established a couple of ground rules in the very beginning. And I, I said to them that I was going to shoot everything. And uh, that if they ever felt uncomfortable, then they should let me know, and I would turn the camera off. Um, and I realized, I mean, I was a little concerned about it at the beginning, but I realized that simply because I shot it didn't mean that it was going to depend on the film. I had control over the editing, so if I felt something was inappropriate, then I wouldn't put it in. Um, but I think that within the first 48 hours, we both kind of really felt that we were a team. And I think that they felt, you know, we're going to trust Rob, and he'll do the right thing. And so there was never really any of that problem. What, what, what's their reaction then to the finished film? Yeah, I showed them the film uh, in October. Uh, and it was, I think it was before we did the color correction, but we had done the, no, we hadn't even done the mix yet. And I was really nervous. I was really nervous because I didn't know what they would think about it. Um, they are passionate uh, followers of the sustainability movement, the agrarian movement. And the film is really more an emotional story about what they went through as opposed to um, a uh, exploration of the agrarian movement. Um, so I was concerned that they may feel that it was too and we sat there and we watched it and when the lights came up they were both in tears and they said you know we had forgotten how hard it was we had forgotten how difficult it was and what we had gone through and later they called me and they said it's, it's astonishing it's, it's amazing what you've done you you have somehow recreated that entire year and to me, I mean, I was very relieved. But it went further than that because um, I've shown it to audiences that are agricultural based. So a lot of them are farmers and people who grew up on farms. And they are all, to a person, just really taken with it and, and, and say, that's what it is. Thank you. Thank you for you know, making this movie because that's what it means to be a farmer. That the, the, the problem with running a small farm and it, it, the problem is the same if you inherit a farm that has been in the family for generations and running for generations if you start the farm from scratch like Paul and Phyllis did then the problem is, is multiply you know, tenfold and the problem is that it's really you're working year to year and you don't really know whether or not you're going to be successful I think the, the success of a farm comes in a long term. Um, you know, for, um, for a farm, uh, that long term period is, is, is more a generation. Um, because farms are at the whim, the business side of a farm is at the whim of, of, of milk prices, which is the economy of weather and, and, and the changes in weather from season to season and you know, period to period. Um, just the, the, the chances of something happening because it's an industrial work site. And so the, the possibility of injury is, is very, very high. So I, I think that the point I'm trying to make is that farming, and when I say farming, I'm mean small family farming like Paul and Phyllis have. Farming is a very, very fragile industry. And it's a little scary because farming is really the basis of everything that we do. I mean, it's our food. 
And when you start looking at the industry and realize how fragile it actually is, um, you really want to get out there and do whatever you can for that others. Well, I, you know, I, I love the news, and it's something that, that I discovered very, very early on. For me, there's nothing better. It's almost like, you know, I got a bar and you got a whatever was put on show. Uh, the old Andy Rooney thing. Um, I think as I've been very fortunate in, in every director I've worked with really has been uh, a director with a unique voice that came out of uh, the independent world. Um, and a lot of the times I've worked with those directors while they were independents and then later once they uh, got financing for studio development. Um, so the directors that I've worked with have all had that independent spirit. Uh, and all of the films have had their individual stamp on them. I think where it becomes difficult is that the more money that's involved in the making of the film, the, the more complicated it becomes to make the film. I think that the more money involved, the more risk the financiers have, lawyers get involved, the more people get involved. When you make a studio movie, there are lots and lots of various departments and department heads that a producer works with and kind of um, you know, runs interference for the, for the director and run interference with the director for all of those various departments. So making, making a studio film or any large film is a very, very political game. Um, and so oftentimes when I make a studio film, I feel the need to kind of go back to the beginning and you know get a barn and cow and put on a show. And I've had an opportunity now over the last couple of years to do small projects and then do big projects. So I, I went to Italy uh, with Wes Anderson and we made, um, we made uh, The Life Aquatic. And I came back and Tim Robbins, who I've worked with on another number of projects, called me up and said, um, I've got a play right now at the public and I, I, it's going to be closing and I want to make a movie about it. And, but I, I need to do it pretty quick and I need to do it for not a lot of money. Do you know anybody who might want to come and produce it? And I said, well, I'll come do it. When, when do you want to shoot? Um, Thursday. <laughs> I said, oh, no. But what was cool about it is, okay, let's do it. Let's figure out a way to make this happen. And you get on the phone, and all of a sudden, you know, four days later, there we are with a bunch of kids from NYU, and we're we're shooting a movie of this play, and we did it. It was it was fantastic. So I think that uh, the first season was very much in that vein. In that, um, I did. Um, I, I let's see the first season. I had just finished Julie Tame Works Across the Universe, and huge movie, and, and big, big studio, lots and lots of people involved. And I was thinking, okay, what am I going to do next? And that's when the first season happened. And I thought, oh, that's great. You know, I'll take a busman's holiday, and I'll go shoot this little movie, and then I'll go do another film. Of course, I didn't know that it was going to take five years, you know, a busman's holiday to do it. But um, I'd love to keep doing it. You know, I'd love to keep my feet in both of those because I think in a lot of ways, John Houston once said, always do one for your pocketbook and 